Now we know how to build a neural network and we know broadly how to train one by gradient descent. What can we do with this? We'll start with the basic machine learning tasks of classification and regression. These will lead to some loss functions. It will also show how we use probability theory in deep learning, which is important to understand. If we have a classification problem with two classes, which we'll call positive and negative, we can place a sigmoid activation on the output layer so that the output is between 0 and 1. We can then interpret this as the probability that the output has the positive class, according to our network. The probability of the negative class is then 1 minus this value. So, what's our loss here? The situation is a little different from the regression setting. Here, the neural network predicts a number between 0 and 1, but the data doesn't give us a corresponding number that this should be close to. The data just tells us which of the classes is true. Broadly, what we want from the loss is that it is a low value if the probability of the true class is close to 1, and high if the probability of the true class is low. One popular function that does this is the logarithmic or log loss, the negative logarithm of the probability of the true class according to the network. That is, if the true class is positive, then we take the negative logarithm of y, the output of the network, because the output of the network is the probability that the class is positive. And if the true class is negative, we take the negative logarithm of 1 minus the output of the network, because that is the predicted probability that the class is negative. The base of the logarithm can be anything, but it's usually e or 2. So what if we have more than one class? Then we want the network to somehow output a probability distribution over all classes. We can't do this with a single node anymore. And instead, we'll give the network one output node for every possible class. So in this case, we have three possible classes. So we've given the network three output nodes. We can then use a special activation function called the softmax activation which ensures that all the output nodes are positive and that they always sum to 1. In short, that taken together, they form a probability vector. We can then interpret this series as values as the class probabilities that our network predicts. That is, after the softmax, we can interpret the output of node 3 as the probability, according to our network, that our input has class 3. To compute the softmax, we simply take the exponent of each output node, oi, to ensure that all three of them are positive, and then we divide each of them by the sum total over all output nodes to ensure that all three of them sum to 1. Note that the softmax is a little unusual for an activation function because it's not element-wise, like the sigmoid or the ReLU are. To compute the value of one output node, you need to look at the values of the other output nodes as well. The loss function for the softmax is then the same as it was for the binary classification. We assume that the data tells us what the correct class is, and we take the negative log probability of the correct class as the loss. This way, the higher the probability is that the model assigns to the correct class, the lower the loss is. Here, are some common loss functions for situations where we have examples t of what the model output y should be for a given input x. We've already seen the squared error, but we've generalized it here a little bit for cases where our model has multiple outputs and the target values form a corresponding vector. In that case, we can simply look at the distance between these two vectors as measured by the Euclidean norm. We can also look at the absolute error, which is the same as the squared error, but without squaring it. We simply look at the difference between the network output and the target value, and we take the absolute magnitude of that difference. And if these are vectors, this corresponds to the L1 norm, as seen here. There's the regular cross entropy, which is the logarithmic loss for a classification problem with an arbitrary number of classes. And one final one that you might encounter is the hinge loss, which is based on support vector machines, and that looks like this. Now, to finish up, 
let's have a look at where these loss functions come from. We didn't just find them by trial and error. In fact, many of them were derived from first principles. And the principle at work most often is a very powerful one, the maximum likelihood principle. It states that we should choose the model for which the data that we observed is most likely. In other words, we want to choose data so that the probability of the data given the model parameters theta is maximized. This is often used in frequentist statistics to fit models to data. Put simply, it says that given some data and a class of models, a good way of picking your model is to see what the probability of the data is under each model and then picking the model for which the probability of the data is highest. In statistics, you usually proceed by filling in the definition of P and solving the maximization problem until you get an explicit expression of your optimal model as a function of your data. In our setting, things aren't so easy. The parameters we are allowed to change are not the parameters of the probability distribution, but the parameters of the neural network, which decides the probability distribution. We cannot usually find a closed form solution for neural networks, but we can start with the maximum likelihood principle and see what we can rewrite it into. Let's try this first for the binary classification network. First, we assume that the neural network with weights theta will somehow describe the probability of seeing the whole data set. All we need to do then is choose those theta in such a way that the probability of all the data we have is maximized. Our first step is to note that our data consists of independent identically distributed samples. This means that the probability of all the data is just the product of the probabilities of the individual instances. The idea here is that each instance is sampled independently and for independent samples we can multiply together the probabilities. Next, we note that we are only modeling the probabilities of the classes but not of the features by themselves. This means that the probability of each instance is just the probability of the class given the features. Next, we stick a logarithm in front. This is a slightly arbitrary choice, but if you work with probability distributions a lot, you will know that taking logarithms of probabilities almost always makes your life easier. You get simpler functions, better numerical stability, and better behaved gradients. Crucially, because the logarithm is a monotonic function, the position of the maximum doesn't change. The model that maximizes the probability of the data is the same as the model that maximizes the log probability of the data. Taking the logarithm inside the product turns the product into a sum. Finally, we want something to minimize, not to maximize, because we're looking for a loss function. So we stick a minus in front and change the arc max to an arc min. We can then scale this value by any constant without moving where the minimum is. In this case, we use 1 over n, where n is the number of instances in our data. With that, we end up with the average log loss over the whole data set. That is, if we start with the maximum likelihood objective and we rewrite carefully step by step, we end up with a simple objective of minimizing the log loss. We can generalize this idea by viewing the output of the neural network as the parameters of a probability distribution. For instance, in the binary classification network, the output of the network is the probability of one of the two classes. This is the parameter theta for a Bernoulli distribution on the space of two classes, positive and negative. In the softmax example, the network output is a probability vector. That's the parameter for a categorical distribution on the space of all classes from 1 to k. To finish up, let's see what happens if we extend this to another distribution, the normal distribution. The normal distribution is a distribution on the number line, so this fits best to a regression problem. We give the network the age and the weight of a person, and our aim is to predict their blood pressure. However, Instead of treating the output node as the predicted blood pressure directly, we treat it as the mean of a probability distribution on the space of all possible blood pressures. To keep things simple, we fix the variance to 1 and we predict only the mean. 
We can also give the neural network two outputs and have it predict both the mean and the variance, but that's something we'll save for later in the course. That gives us this picture. We are given a true value, which stays in place, and our job is to move the predicted mean around so that the probability density of the true value is as high as we can make it. As you can see, the best we can do is to put the predicted mean exactly on the true value. We move the mean by changing the weights of our neural network. Of course, for every instance we see, t will be in a new place, so the weights should give us a new mean for every input x we see. So, what does the maximum likelihood objective look like for this problem? We're maximizing the probability density here rather than the probability, but the approach remains the same. We start by stating the maximum likelihood objective. We want to choose the parameters of our neural network so that the probability of our data is maximized. Again, we assume that the data is sampled independently so that the probability of the whole data set is simply the product of the individual probabilities of the instances. We take the log probability, we put a minus in front, turning the maximum into a minimum. We move the logarithm inside the product, turning it into a sum. And then we scale by an arbitrary constant, in this case 1 over n, so that we get the average negative log probability density over the whole data. At this point, we can fill in what this probability of the target value given the features is, which in our case is the normal distribution parameterized by setting the mean at y, where y is the output of the neural network. Note that the parameters now go into y. The parameters determine y in this, uh, in this equation. We can now fill in the function that describes this probability density, the density of t, given that the uh, mean is y and the variance is 1. This is a complicated function, but it quickly simplifies because we've put a natural logarithm in front. We first break it up into two terms. The first term contains only constants, so we can discard it. It doesn't affect where the minimum is. And the second term contains an exponent directly in a natural logarithm, so we can cancel these against each other, and then we can cancel this minus against this minus, so that we are left with just this value, where the one half, again, is an arbitrary multiplicative constant, so we can remove it without affecting where the minimum is, which leaves us with this expression. Looking back to where we started, we can see that this tells us that maximizing the likelihood of the data is equivalent to minimizing the average squared error over the data, the loss function that we've been using all along. You may wonder if this is how the squared error loss that we use so much was first discovered, by starting with this famous normal distribution and then working out the maximum likelihood solution for its parameters. The truth is a little stranger. In point of fact, it was the other way around. Gauss, who discovered the normal distribution, started with the idea of the mean, the mean of a set of measurements as a good approximation of the true value. This was something people had been using since antiquity, and he wanted to justify its use. Gauss then invented the maximum likelihood principle to do so. Then he asked himself what kind of probability density function would have the mean as its maximum likelihood solution. He worked out that its logarithm would have to correspond to the squares of the residuals. And from that, he worked out the basic form of the normal distribution, essentially doing what we just did, but in the opposite direction. What we've shown is that almost all of the loss functions we use regularly can be derived from this basic principle of maximum likelihood. This is important to understand because it's a principle we will return to multiple times throughout the course, especially in the context of generative models.